people on this topic, and I look forward to working with you on this vital effort. Now I'm pleased to introduce our lunch speaker, White House Cybersecurity Coordinator Howard Schmidt. Howard's distinguished career spans more than 40 years in the military, law enforcement, and corporate security fields. He is an expert in the areas of computer security, cybercrime, critical infrastructure protection, and cybersecurity. His private sector experience includes such roles as CEO of Information Security Forum, Chief Information Security Officer at eBay, and Chief Security Officer at Microsoft. His previous public sector positions have been within the White House, the FBI, and the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. Howard has developed a reputation for being a leader in the creation of public-private partnerships. He has received numerous awards and recognitions from both the public and private sectors. One year ago, Howard was appointed to his current position of White House Cybersecurity Coordinator by President Obama. Only one week into that role, he appeared here at the State of the Net Conference to discuss the major challenges the U.S. would be facing and answered questions on his ideas for solutions to those challenges. I'm pleased to once again welcome Howard to the State of the Net Conference, and I look forward, as we all do, to hearing his take on the cybersecurity challenges the U.S. still faces, as well as his thoughts on how to tackle them. Please join me in welcoming Howard Schmidt. Well, thank you very much, Congressman. I very much appreciate it. And I'd like to also thank the organizers, the sponsors of this event. Uh, I was reflecting this morning that it was, a, it was a year ago when this was my first public coming out for uh, my new position at the White House, and I couldn't thought of a, uh, think of a better time or a group to meet with at that time, just like today is the same thing, sort of an update on some of the things we're looking at. Uh, when I think about the Congressional Internet Caucus and the important work that they're doing, sort of bringing all these pieces together, very much appreciate your co-chairmanship of that to make sure that this really indeed encompasses all the different pieces of it. You know, when we think about the Internet, and it's like that uh, story they talk about putting an elephant in a room and everybody reaches through the curtain and what part you grab on is how you describe it. Uh, and I think very much that is the case when you start looking at how people describe the Internet. Some people, it's about online banking. Some people uh, talk about the social networking. Some it's a business. Some it's a uh, military and intelligence issue. But the bottom line is that we use, all use it, and we all need to maintain its level of security. But I think one of the things that's really important to understand as well, as the congressman mentioned, that this is also uh, cybersecurity is key to a lot of other pieces, intellectual property, the economic uh, success that we have as, as a country. And I very much back your, your comment and your sentiment from your article on the House website that talks about cybersecurity being a key homeland security threat and our government must take stricter measures to make sure that we're protecting our vulnerable systems that are oftentimes owned and operated by the private sector. But events like this really can underscore the array of issues that we're dealing with and having the right people in the room to do this really can go a long way to helping improve our, nas our nation's cybersecurity posture. Now, having said that, I also don't want to lose sight of a, another notable event that's taken place, uh, I think it was the 16th of this month as well, that the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, celebrated its 25th anniversary as well. And when we start looking at the standards that cover most of the protocols, the things that make the Internet what it is, and, the, and this is the body that deals with it on a day-to-day -day basis, working with the government uh, standards bodies as well. I think we've really come a long way, and that 25th anniversary puts us in a position in some of the things we're looking at, like DNSSEC and some of the, uh, the things we're looking to improve overall security, really can be attributed to the work that they've been doing as well. So I want to just sort of frame, as the Congressman mentioned, some of the things that uh, uh, we're looking at sort of the next year that we are, either are doing or have been doing. And I think I'm going to over, uh, skip over the pieces about the threats and all those things. So I think everybody in this room is very much aware of those, and I don't think there's anything I can really add to that. Uh, but I'm going to make my comments today in, in four major buckets. First, I'd like to talk about some of the things we're looking at working with Congress relative to modernizing some of the laws around cybersecurity practices. Secondly, I uh, want to take a few minutes and talk about 
and improving our online authentication with the National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace, or NSTEC. Third, and this is something that I think we all take for granted, is the international dimension of cybersecurity and the things we're looking to, to sort of do a broader international engagement for, cyber, for cyberspace security issues. And lastly, on the, on the private-public partnerships, the core of much of the work we're doing. So first on the legislation front, I think there is no uh, shortage of interest on the Hill. Uh, we have a lot of really dedicated uh, leaders up there that are looking for ways to solve this, from judiciary to homeland security to commerce uh, to banking and finance. There's a lot of interest, and I think we all also recognize that in the 111th Congress, there were about 50-some-odd bills spread across 20-some-odd uh, committees looking at issues uh, on cybersecurity. The good news is pretty much all of them were very much a bipartisan issue. Uh, and I think that speaks volumes to the necessity to recognize some of the challenges that we have facing us are things that we can work on collectively to help solve. And when we start looking at cybersecurity in the 112th Congress, you know, making sure that this is an area of focus for the committees and the chambers are vitally important for us to do that. At least uh, uh, the past year, there's been a key relationship between Congress and the administration's efforts relative to cybersecurity. There's a strong commitment that we have at the White House and the rest of the executive branch to work with Congress to make sure that we, we're making some good progress this year, to working on both chambers to ensure that when we start looking at solutions, they're going to indeed be things that we need and also to ensure that things that may not be helpful, that we have that dialogue to ensure that we're not putting those things on the table that would affect adversely some of the work we're trying to do. Uh, we very much look forward to working with uh, the new Congress. Uh, I think the Senate comes in this week sometime or early part of next week. Uh, we'll have everybody uh, back in place and moving forward to sort of coalesce all the things that we've seen in these various pieces of legislation, how we can become more comprehensive in the views and move forward. Now the NSTIC, and, I, and, and the NSTIC is probably going to take most of my comments here this afternoon, uh, because when you look beyond the legislation and some of the, the work the President's asked us to do is how do we drive the future of online services? How do we address the privacy threats that are currently out there, such as identity theft and credit card fraud, and how do we really foster an environment we can make things more trustworthy? So when we started working on the National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace, or the NSTIC, one of the key tenets of that is to make sure that we're working this in a fully comprehensive, all of government and all private sector area. And I think as we're getting closer to the goal line on putting out the strategy, I think we can all look back at this and say, yes, this has been a very collaborative process. It has been a mechanism by which we've taken a document that we sort of, uh, when we first put it together, had a lot of things we had to adjust. We had a lot of input from private sector, from Congress, from uh, members of the executive branch, our international partners. And we've taken a document that had a lot of pieces to it, and we made it more concise and more uh, specific as far as some of the things that we don't want to do, as well as the things that we want to do. Now, underlying this, we want to make sure that we continue to foster online growth. Because as I'm sure many of you have, when you start talking to friends and family members and the concerns they have, I've heard people say, I'd like to do more, but I can't trust it. I don't know what to do. I don't want to have my identity stolen. I don't want to have my credit card compromised. Businesses, I don't want to have my intellectual property stolen. I don't trust a lot of these things out there. And I think working together, we can really move this forward significantly. But all things don't require a higher level of authentication or a higher level of uh, identity assurance when we do these things. But strictly right now, to rely on a system which is primarily built, built on reusable passwords is a system that... Uh, gives us the problems that we've had today. We want to make sure that we back away from that. And we also want to make sure there's choices. Choices whether or not you do it or, or how, how you do it, how many times you do it, how many different types of, of identities you want to have for different environments. That's part of this structure that we're working on, this ecosystem as we call it. But we also understand that part of the uh, guiding principles of this identity ecosystem is importance of privacy and civil liberties. You know, identity theft is far too commonplace to sort of create some sort of interoperable way forward without making sure that we're building in the privacy and civil liberties uh, 
infrastructure to address some of these issues. And of course, some of the things we're looking at is the fair information practice principles that the FTC has put out. I think many of you are familiar with those, but basically when we start looking at the end stick moving forward, that's going to be the anchor on a lot of these things. We have an opportunity as we start doing better trusted identities in cyberspace to look at the data we collect, how long it's collected, what it's collected for, what choice that we have, we have as literally the owners of the data, what people do with it. This is the opportunity to build that infrastructure as we haven't done up to now. But I also want to take a couple minutes and talk about what this is not. As Secretary Locke said when we announced the uh, National Program Office in Stanford a couple weeks ago, this is not a national ID card. The government will not mandate that individuals obtain an identity credential in any form or shape. It's not a single point of failure either, not a place where you have an aggregated database that if that gets compromised, everything gets compromised. It's not an online driver's license. It's definitely not these sort of things that basically all we all have concerns about. But what we do want to have in this thing is the ability to take advantage of all the online services that we're given. I just left a meeting earlier this morning with a group from the European Union, European Commission, and looking across what they're doing at all the member states in Europe. And they just like we do in the United States. They have concerns in some area where they don't want to see anything that even res remotely resembles a national ID to other places where people are quite comfortable with it. So they recognize their infrastructure and hopefully ultimately interoperable with ours is a system of systems and not just a, a, signal, a single monoculture of sort of a identities that we do out there. But for those that have been talking about wanting to read between the lines and sort of intimating what this is really is, I think there's a couple things I have to say to that. Wait to see where the real lines come out and then read the lights. And then when you look at the lines, see exactly how that fits into the things we're trying to do. Because cr clearly when we look at this ecosystem we've been talking about, the intent is to is not have one solution that fits all, that we all have choices. Businesses will have a piece to it. Businesses today, particularly online banking and e-commerce, they have a requirement for us to have a do a better job about proving who we are when we transact things with them. So we want to make sure we preserve that and enhance it, move away from some of the issues that create credit card fraud and identity theft today. But we also want to make sure that we also have the choice to be able to communicate anonymously uh, in such things as blogs and other pieces of email that we want to make sure that we have the ability to say, yes, I can say what's on my mind. I can do, uh, I can provide and, and own the civil liberties that we, we cherish as Americans without fear of some of the things we've seen in, in different countries we look at. But the bottom line is this ecosystem we're talking about, this is not something we're saying, Here's, here it is, go forth and make it work. These are things that we each have an opportunity to participate on in the build to make sure that it fits our lifestyles, our cultures, our way of doing business, our way of not doing business if we choose to do that. So when if, you, if you're looking at anything today that says, you know, here's what's being mandated, that's not the case. We will own this collectively as citizens. That's one of the things we have to really pay a lot of attention to. But having said that, I also want to make sure we understand that there's a lot of other work that needs to be done in addition to the trusted identities. We still are fraught with vulnerabilities in software and firmware. We also have to deal with the issues of, of uh, uh, malware and things that we wind up uh, seeing on a daily basis. We have to deal with social engineering because not everybody that, that's in this room is a technical genius. It's often difficult to identify which is legitimate email we're getting and which one's not. So as a consequence, all these things need to continue to move forward. The trusted identities in cyberspace is only one piece of that. And we can and we should be moving in parallel with these other efforts that we do moving forward to make sure the next generation that we're building is less vulnerable and more resilient. So I mentioned a moment ago, and I, I don't, I'm not sure if everybody's aware of it, but uh, Secretary Locke and, and myself um, made an announcement at Stanford uh, two weeks ago Friday uh, that Commerce is going to be hosting the National Program Office for this. And as I said then, as I stick by today, Commerce and the National Institute of Standards and Technology has a unique capacity within the government to bring the right people together from private sector, to bring the, the privacy and civil liberty groups together to make sure that five years from now when we look back at this, we say we've developed a system that was better than the systems that got us here today. 
Sort of the next piece I want to touch briefly on is also the international policy. We all know that the, the international nature of the internet, we can't solve this as a government or as the American citizens as well. We have to look at the international community as well. There are some out there that, that hold the same values that we do. There's some that basically are diametrically opposed to some of the things that we cherish, but we still have to work with them because the servers and the infrastructure that we run that is the internet today is hosted in other countries. And we need to sit down with them and sooner than later start discussing how we're gonna solve some of these problems. Whether it's the theft of intellectual property as the congressman mentioned, or it's the issues related to cybercrime or protection of anything that we see identities on, on online. We have to make sure we're engaging in a proactive manner with sometimes people that are diff difficult to have conversations with. But when we look at that international policy, there are some tenets that really go to the core of some of the things we're looking at. First and foremost, internet freedom must be preserved and must be a core principle of any part of discussion of norms on international agreements for behavior in cyberspace. Secondly, privacy is a very important part of internet freedom and that also needs to be preserved and that also that internet freedom must support human rights. And if we look at some of the things that are going on in the world today and look at the, the mechanism that the internet provides to people to, to go ahead and do the things that they're doing, those three tenets are vitally important and any international work we do must preserve those. And lastly, and I think this is probably a group that understands this better than anybody, and that's the public-private partnerships. Everyone is a target for cyber attacks. Individuals, businesses, small businesses, governments, universities, we all deal with these issues. So when we all have some sort of information that is valuable to someone else beyond us. So we need to make sure that we're working together to make sure that this is not just a theft issue that we're reducing the likelihood of people even become a victims. And even access to those computer systems. An earlier discussion today talking about machine-to-machine -machine authentication. And many of the transactions we look at today and the work that we do in the online world, the computers are talking on our behalf. So we need to make sure that we're reducing the risk all the way across the board for these. So the basic philosophy is this is a shared responsibility. And to that end, another good example of that recently, the Department of Homeland Security and the Financial Services Sector Coordinating Council and the National Institute of Standards of Technology signed a memorandum of understanding that basically looked to transition cybersecurity-related research into real-world solutions. And this is not to talk in theory. This is to actually sit there and take some of the things we're putting together and make sure we've got real live working cases that we can work on. But we're also... In a, in a really tight time frame now to make sure that we're doing more to share information with the private sector. I think we all recognize that the government has unique access to some sort of information, whether it's intelligence, whether it's law enforcement information. We have access to information that can help our businesses better protect themselves. And we need to continue to look for ways to share that information where we preserve this, the law enforcement investigations that are being worked on, but also give our universities and our businesses and our citizens the ability to better protect themselves. Because I guarantee you, when one of us gets that piece of malware in the form of a phishing email in our inbox, we should be able to have the information, number one, so it never even presents itself in the inbox, but more importantly, is if it, does make, if it does make it in there, that we have the ability to say, no, this is not something I trust because I know something I didn't know before. And right now it's up to a guessing game and we can't afford to play that game anymore. So in conclusion, when it comes to cyber, cyber security, we all have a role to play. And I think once again, as long as the internet, uh, the, the commission and the Congress has been together, that we recognize that we all have a role in this and in making sure that the federal government, the private sector, academia, state, local, tribal governments, individuals, international partners, in short, everyone are working together to solve these problems. So in closing, just the thing that I say every time I get an opportunity is we all have to do our part to secure our, secure our cyberspace because if we take care of our piece and everybody takes care of their piece, we'll all be better for it. So thank you once again for the opportunity to address the caucus again. Thank you.